Most Australians believe it's important for loved ones to know about their end of life plans. But one in two Australians don't let their wishes be known. The evidence makes it very clear that good quality supportive care leads to better end of life and also to better grief and mourning for those left behind. Sadly though, there are Australians who encounter difficulty in accessing the quality palliative care that is right for them. And this includes our First Nations people. Palliative Care Australia is the national peak body for palliative care and is committed to seeing improvements in this area. In this video, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people share what palliative care means to them and their communities. Before hearing what they had to say, I wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which this video was filmed and is broadcast and pay respect to their elders past and present and emerging. For more information on palliative care, please visit our website or talk to a trusted health professional. Probably the most important thing about being out on country to finish up is the fact that we're able to pass on those really significant cultural songs, cultural stories to the next generation to ensure that our culture stays strong. Going out on country gives us access to our culture, gives us access to our kinship. I suppose being out on country, we're able to access bush tuckers, we're able to access traditional healers. Living in other places, that's not where your, your country is or where you were born. It's good to go back home. You know, it's where he can be close to his father's, mother's, grandfather's, his ancestors, you know. And uh, because if you're buried somewhere else, you don't belong to that country. You know, you need to go back, go back home. Yeah. It's a strong belief that if our bodies don't end up on country, or if we don't die on country, that our lingan or our spirit does not have clear passage to move on to the next part of the journey. It can actually exacerbate their condition being away from home more than being at home. Even though it's a natural part of life, death comes to all of us, nobody wants to talk about it. And more so in an Aboriginal context. I suppose if you go back 20 years, death and dying was actually sacred business and was only spoken about in our own circles. It's obviously a sad time. We generally don't speak openly about death and dying. Well, my attitude towards death and dying is obviously it's a worrying case. It's scary, it's fearful. For many people, talking openly about death and dying means that something will happen, someone will die. First of all is, is the actual place of death, whether we're dying out on country, in our homelands. For a lot of Aboriginal people, that is extremely important. Personally, I just worry whether I've got my own house in order. I want to make sure or ensure that the, my, you know, my family and my kids will be taken care of. And so it's all about getting individuals and communities to understand why it's important to them. You know, things like um, making sure that you'll get back onto country to finish up. An APP can do that. Making sure that our kinship don't fight. Making sure that people don't fight after you die. The Advanced Personal Plan can stop fighting amongst your family, both prior to and after. Another thing that we see often disputes about is the decision makers. And so having this down on a form where we could actually sit down and speak with the whole family and say that these are the wishes certainly make it easier to alleviate the fighting. I don't want to be a burden to anyone either. I would like to be prepared. Some people don't have things in play where they don't have their wishes written down or what they wanted. And we can see a lot of, you know, arguments arising within the family. It's not just about you. It's about everybody else because they're the ones that are going to be left. We need to sort of invite certain people to the table to have these discussions. And there needs to be sort of clear, transparent communication between family groups and the patient. It's about caring for family, loved ones, provide them medical care. 
Aboriginal people have a feeling about their spirit and where they want their spirit to be when they pass away. And it's really worthwhile having that conversation with where the person needs to be. If you're from a remote area, you're more likely to be more spiritually connected to your land. And when you go through certain systems in the hospital and when you're diagnosed, you want to sort of be respected with your culture and be given opportunity and the options of where you'd like to be positioned. I've really gone the full flip side. I've gone from being a person that's really, really frightened about palliative care because I associate it with death, to actually looking at it from a different perspective and seeing it in a good light and seeing it in a way that it's not actually about death and dying. It's, it's more about getting the best out of whatever life that you have left and ensuring that people can move on to the next part of their life, um, you know, feeling at ease because you know, all of their wishes and all of their plans are all in place. There's an enormous amount of cultural protocols that need to be considered. In hospitals, they quite often don't take into consideration the Aboriginal extended family, and there can be hundreds. If we examine Aboriginal languages and we look all across all the languages across Australia, we've never had a word for palliative care. In the islands, there's, there's a lot of changes from the old ways and to the modern ways. We do like what we do down here now in the city, so we do the viewing and go to the church and then go to the cemetery. But the cultural ways is probably a bit more different. Up in uh, Arnhem Land, they have to wait for months before they start burying. The loved ones. In terms of Western society, we have a funeral that goes for a day. In our Aboriginal circles, we have what's called sorry business, or sorry camps, and they're an extended period. They're over, could be up to two or three weeks. There's ceremonies that are done often before someone passes to get them ready for the next part of the journey. When someone finishes up or when someone does die, usually we will have a smoking or a sweeping ceremony after the event. And what that's all about is that's ensuring that the spirit has um, you know, clear passage to move on to the next part of the journey. Cultural ways uh, may be a bit different. Everything up to do it right. Here in the top end, when someone passes away, we do not use their name. We certainly don't use their name. You might refer to them as that old fella. Many tribes up in the top end and in the territory, you know, we don't like to view photos or videos of people once they're deceased. If palliative care embraced the traditional way, we, we add more understanding, you know, of um, how to do it. Like give them medication, help them with food and everything, you know. If I was in charge, I would listen to his wishes, you know. Nothing gives me more pride than being able to work with our elders, you know, the people that hold all our cultural knowledge um, in, the, in the final stages of their lives. I think it's important to have that palliative care. If you have more awareness in the community uh, about this uh, palliative care, so that we can prepare, it's good to understand and learn from, and family after need, need to get more info, information about palliative care so that they don't have to worry what that thing means, what palliative care means, what you have to do with that. Give that like support to him, you know, to the family, you know. For me now, I can, I can be aware of um, what this palliative care is, is about. If you have more awareness in the community about this palliative care and so that we can prepare. My wishes are already laid out. And, and I've taken care of all the hard stuff. I suppose personally for me, um, I see death and dying as a natural part of life, you know, in the same way that we come from the earth one day, we return to the earth to start the next part of our journey. When I think about that word palliative care, I get a warm feeling inside. I get a feeling that this is a privilege to be in an area where I'm looking after elders. If you have certain wishes that you want people to abide by, then um, you need to be really clear about that and you need to be clear about it now while you're in a reasonably healthy mind, healthy body and, and you know what you want and more so in an Aboriginal context it's much harder because 
The woman of the family is always seen as the strength of the family. She's the matriarch, she's the person that holds the family together. And that's why I want to get my house in order as much as I can. I guess this is a, you know, the thing about being a human being. We're all unique, we're all diverse, we're all different. And we all have our own plans, our own wishes. And I guess at the end of the day, we want those plans and those wishes to be respected by everybody. So it's really important for us as a family to discuss about that palliative care. If we look back in the history of things, knowing that Aboriginal people, we've had so many of our rights and wishes taken away. And, you know, by letting people in community know this is a chance to make sure that your rights, your wishes, your demands are happening.